all AP courses, AP literature is designed to be a college level course and the AP literature class is fun because we get to read literature from 1600 to modern li literature. Adam of course is calling the twins his children. Who's the other possibility of being the father? Charles. Uh -huh. Charles. And that one of you I already heard talking on a break about uh, what if Adam's the dad of one of the sons and Charles is the dad of the other. Um, we read plays, novels, short stories, poetry, and the the end goal is that the students are able to demonstrate by the end of the year that they're, they have read widely, they're well read, and they also are able to analyze literature. Basically here the continuum was like discussing and I thought the tone was like kind of like jaunty and like it was a moment of like not necessarily happiness but it was just a moment of like neutrality and kind of peacefulness. I thought the tone was kind of amused and warm. Steinbeck is talking about um, the narrator's mother, Olive Hamilton, and kind of talks about her exaggerated emotional reactions to show her eccentricity and show that it's kind of like fond of these traits that she has. Today we were doing a Socratic seminar on the novel East of Eden by John Steinbeck. Socratic seminar was originally developed uh, as a discussion method that usually would be used for a very small piece of text, like one page to two pages to really get in depth but I've adapted it here to talk about a whole section of the book. Because I think her main role for the story is to drive um, events. So for instance, Adam's sudden ignorance of the twins and his emotional development, I guess. Um, as a character herself, as far as I can see, she's just supposed to represent the evilness that people can hold within themselves in a way, we can only say that Kathy is also a protagonist, we just don't know what she wants. But the story is very much about her as much as it is about Adam or Samuel, because we spend pretty much an equal amount of time learning what she's doing that is not related to the Trasks or the Hamiltons. Because Kathy is now integrated into their lives. But does that mean that, would he be happier, do you think? I mean, he's not happy either way, so... Well, he was having to stop because he was trying to build like his, <clears throat> like his paradise with like all his water and his land, and then with Charles he wouldn't be able to do that. So I guess it depends what you define as happiness, because at the moment, yes, he's devastated because Kathy left him, but on a farm with Charles he had nothing to live for, apart from farming and making more money. And I mean also when he left, it was like his dream to leave, and like any logical person does. He's always been under the hand of his father. He's been told what to do. Like he was, Charles always, not abused him, but there was always a rivalry. Then he got sent to the army and now he's following and doing his own thing, I guess you could say. And the idea is that the students are really in charge of the conversation, um, that they, they do have questions. They have to answer from me that they prepare beforehand. So they're bringing prepared thoughts into the group. And the longer the students do it, the more adept they get at coming up with their own questions that are all, would also be interesting for discussion. So they did that today as well. Many of the questions they discussed today in class were not for me and some were. And you think it was like on purpose that he chose Adam or like a character named Adam to yeah. take these actions? I feel like Kathy is actually more of a serpent than an Eve though. Because often like uh, there's mentioned like that she, I don't know, licks her lips weirdly like with, as though her tongue's like a bit like a serpent, like snake tongue. I don't know. Is, but also, um, she's also compared to the hanged man that Samuel reflects on in chapter, I believe, 16 or 17. And he talks about the hanged man having those dead eyes that don't look like a human, and the man standing with his arms behind his back so you could only see a shape of him. And that seems a bit of a stretch to me, but that's also serpent-like in the way that just like the dead eyes and no movement with your hands. She's sitting always with her hands clasped when she's, um, and Liza even references that she's not doing anything, she's idle. And it's all that sin is idleness and richness. And she's just sitting there like this, kind of just thinking, I guess. Another thing is that uh, Steinbeck constantly says that she has white set eyes. And like snakes have white set eyes, I guess, like they're on the sides of their heads. So I guess that can also be interpreted. That's true, I hadn't thought about that before. Um, did anybody else pick up on when Sam was reading the Old Testament and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden?
So wasn't Eden supposed to represent the good? How come Cain, the bad one of the story, also resides there? What I love about Socratic Seminar is it puts the students in the driver's seat in the control of what about the novel or the literature that we're reading is interesting, is worth discussing. And they always come to points that I don't think they would have if the teacher were playing a more intense role in the discussion. They're really responsible for the success or the failure of that discussion, but this group of course is always successful. <laughs> it seems like bad people, as in Kathy, react really bad to alcohol, whilst the whiskey that Sam and Adam and Lee drink somehow brings out the best of them and they become more civil. That was like covering up her true nature. And once that was like dropped, that, tro that caused her to commit like truly heinous crimes. When uh, Samuel, Adam and Lee drink it, it's not bad for them because their nature is good. But when the Kathy drinks it, since her nature is like, uh, like being a monster kind of, then that's what, that's what uh, the alcohol reveals. But this skill of analyzing applies to other things in our life that's not literature. So we get to read really interesting things, have uh, fascinating conversations with each other about it, but the students the entire time are building the skill of coming up with an idea or a concept or an argument and then defending it and convincing other people to believe in it. And uh, not to stretch it too far, but I enjoy that aspect of the course because I think this is what we need for a democracy. This is what we need for our societies to function well, is well-educated people who can see things from another perspective and who can, uh, like we do when we read literature, we see through the narrator's eyes or the character's perspective. Um, and and then they can defend that opinion. They can take a stance and try and convince people of it. So that's what we're doing with literature here in this course. And it's a great, fun class to teach. She's the bad person. She's sort of like the snank or something. That is such a good idea. Well done. I didn't think of that. <laughs> What's one thing that was brought up in the conversation today that you'd like to do more thinking about or more reading about?